Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Chris. Hello. Chris, tell me a little bit about yourself, man. Or you know what? I think you already know what I'm kind of interested in talking about. So why don't I just, why don't you tell me what you think I'm interested in talking about? Um, Bog Iron Sites and um, uh, I'm in Northwest England. I, that's, I, I can't, all my archaeology is done in this area. Um, and the Bog Iron Sites that I'm interested in is between the River Ripple and the River Mersey, Northwest England. Which there was um, the Vikings have, have, have harvested the, the bog iron in the area. Uh, bog iron can be harvested because it's a mineral, and it's uh, it, 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 if it's taken out of the ground, it will be there again in 15, 20 years. So, what exactly is a Viking bog iron site? Now, is that like a mine just the Vikings used? Well, no, it was in mining. The if, if you mined iron, the, you were getting about three percent iron out of the ore. The bog iron produces 40% iron oh. and, a, and a better quality iron. That's why the, the Vikings used it. They went to uh, Greenland and possibly America looking for it. So they, they knew it was here. And the, uh, the reason I got onto it is I was born in the area six odd years ago and there's little pits, thousands of pits all over the area. A lot of them are being covered over now by fields or buildings. But... Um, and the history, the local history books say some of them say that the mile pits, well, they're not mile pits because this area is sandstone and nothing else. It's it's just sandstone. There's nothing else here, sandstone. Our, our glacial flow was a aluminum plague, which is which, which you can find when you go down. So we have, we've got no bowls, there's nothing. We're on sandstone. And then to, to have marl, you need limestone. There's no limestone here, so they're not marl pits. Another history book says that they're um, that the uh, clay pits that were used to get clay to build the canal, which is wrong again because the canal, the clay for the canal was built with them um, Cornish silk clay. It's the only clay that they used. Well, it's an American idea that as well, by the way. And then um, the other one was that there were bomb craters from the war, but we certainly weren't them because we father was born was here in the war and there's no bombs so i found bog iron they all had traces of uh, it looked like it looks a bit like um rust just just rust that's just running into the water so if you follow the rust with a stick and poke down you'll come on something hard and then you split the the the, the bog and you can pick it up just like rocks this big. I've got some on the on the Twitter pictures. Oh, uh, with uh, like, what was their particular interest in it though? Was it just on the fact of like weaponry? Is that how they got their weapons so advanced? Because like with iron, I mean, that's the main use of iron back in the day was using it for weaponry, not really using it for building materials as much. Well, <laughs> I think that they were, um, I, I think that they were harvesting it here and taking it away as. As as bog iron stones to somewhere else, probably back to uh, to Norway where they've had big furnaces to, to to get the job done. I think it was a hard they were harvesting it here and then coming and then going back. I think they were here, but they were here, They were mentioned in in, in our local history in ten, in Doomsday Book. The, the area was known as the West Derby Hundred, and this area was was Sefton. It's still Sefton. And um, it says that it, all it says is three chains uh, ruled Sefton, but they had no idea what we'd done or whatever it was. Well, th these chains were, were high up lords or maybe even princes. And two, one, one was named Harrod, one was named Elfin, and we're not sure of the third one. But um, there's a Harrod Hill that looks right over the whole area. Of it, right, look all right, right across the whole area. But when I was looking at these bike, these bike and bog irons, I noticed something else. This is over a long period of these stones I was I've been finding. It's something that you keep letting me make. Give you instance, if you picked a ping pong ball up, by the time. I was thinking it was a ping because it's a ping pong ball. Yeah, it's the weight of a golf ball. Yeah. You're going to go, you'll think to yourself, that's strange. So you keep it. 
And I, I kept finding these types of things in, 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 condensed into the same different locations, you know. So, uh, and then I, I, I could see there was something carved and it was definitely carved. And these stones, by the way, consisted of uh, obsidian, <laughs> um, green, green emeralds, unbelievable. And I, I think I've got uh, stones that are metal in them. They could be meteorites. But these, so accidentally one day, there was two of these stones by, next to a mirror where, in my study where I, where I, where I used to look at them. And that's where they... The whole things came up, if you know what I mean. The whole picture of the stones. If you look at some of the stones, the detail on them, on the carving, it, it, it's incredible. It's, I don't know how it's, it's done, but it wasn't the Vikings who done that. And I'm, I'm positive now that it was the Anglesey Celts, the Druid Celts. That, that, that these are the, the Druids from Anglesey. They looked for the great for the mounds for where they were buried, but they've never found them. Yet they've never looked here. And I'm only now from about 32 miles from Anglesey, 1,500 years ago, maybe more Roman invasion. We could have been as near as 15 miles away. So from what I'm basically understanding is, do you think that may be a factor? Like we always look at the Vikings as a very brutal and rash race. Like they always like to pillage. And that was probably part of their resume for sure. But on a concept of like, they also had, like, we started to notice their creativity, you know, a lot of their stuff when it comes to carvings and a lot of f form. Now, are you saying that that might be equated to something else? Like maybe they pillaged and took those things from somebody? No, I think the Vikings were here from about the, the, the 8th century, 700s. And I think before them, the Celts were here. The, 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 the Celtic Druids from Anglesey, the, the, the Druids were the, the heads, the, the, um, the shamans of the, uh, of, the, of the Celtic world. And the archaeologists have looked in all the islands between here and Anglesey to see if they can find anything. And they haven't. But I, they're here. That's why they haven't found them. They're here. I've, found, I've, I've got proof they're here. What, what I've is... also found gold. i found silver. What does that mean? Mixed, what does that mixed. mean though? Like what 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 would that um entail for us to be able to like is that just mean that there's another piece of history that we really don't know about? We might they actually yeah. predate yeah. That's what it is. When the Romans came, when the Romans invaded, I think 76 AD, they went from after uh, London, London, we went straight to Anglesey to look for the for the Celts. It's in the ancient books. And if you know the topography of the area, it's not hard to realise. There's only one. If you've got, if you're surrounded, you're I'm surrounded by, by um, Roman legions. There's only one way to escape, and that's overnight on a small boat up the coast, which you could navigate, and into the estuary of the River Oak where I, I'm on. And um, you'd have then ten mile of just flat bogland, which would flood all the time. Uh, and it, it flooded up to before the first, before the Second World War, and then um, then they built the banks up of the river. Uh, the Americans built it up for us, and uh, showed and um, we um, grow crops on each side of it now. But before that, it, it just even with a small shower, it was flood, and so you'd have a river, and then suddenly it had just become a a, a, a a sea. So if you didn't know the didn't know that river you know, very, very well. You you wouldn't go in it. Yes. So it was a good place to escape. And then the river after about 10 miles would go into woodland and, and go through woodland, which is full of, of the, it's not there, the woodland, but where it was, uh, there's five that I know of, um, springs, freshwater springs that feed the river. How often are you finding something when you go? I know where they are. <laughs> well, I've, I've been looking at this now for, 25 years and I can I know where they are I know I know where the mounds are I know I've got the I've got the proof that it's here I've got the proof I'm known by all the local archaeologists but mm -hmm. in this country there's no in this country there's no finance for anything pagan through universities because so they're trying yeah. to rule it out 
Yeah, of course. So there's no step. So our local university or museum, that they wouldn't get the finance to come and look at one of these mounds. Even the Sutton Hill Mound had to be, it wasn't financed by the government, it had to be privately financed. So it's a lot of money to get archaeologists in and dig. Why do you why do you think that there's just a large like I've been hearing this all over the place about people tearing up archaeo or archaeologist funding programs in school and I'm like what's the what's the what's the objective of trying to eliminate this whole entire thing like understanding like pagan roots for instance is it just because of how it's stigmatized in society or is it a fact that that's not what everyone's interested in it seems like more people are interested in the pyramids or dinosaurs no I think it's in this country it's a Christian country and then. It's only pagan archaeology in this country is only really coming out at the moment now, you know. But uh, it's everywhere. Yeah. But it's not financed because it's just not financed by the government. You don't want to finance anything unchristian. You, you know, they changed all the Christian names to, to all the pagan names to to Christian names. Um, this area where I live, Magol, was used to be called, but was changed to Magali. In the doomsday, but the change in fact, it's a lot that, of them. That's just so weird because, like, for instance, there's like 47% of the population of the world that isn't really religious anymore. Like, that number is rising and rising. You would think that they would kind of get out of like the Christian is lower than it used to be back 10 years ago. So, you look at that, like, why are we trying to eliminate history just because it doesn't fit with your religious history? It's pretext and old history. Some of the stuff we can't explain, a lot of that is because nobody wants them exploring or going into deeper of what those roots could possibly be. Finding out that you have pagan roots is considered like a sin or is considered some type of horrible dirty secret you got to hide in the basement i'm like but if it's true you want to know what that is you don't think that way anymore but it's like saying the vikings never pillaged they did pillage and they took mushrooms but you can't eliminate that from history but people will try their best to yeah you, you just that's exactly what it is what you said it's exactly what it is it's it, britain now england now is less religious than it's ever been yet the powers that are, it's, 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 these people, these archaeologists know as well that, it, you know, they, they, they'll never tell you, but they know, but it's not worth it. It's very difficult for them, I think. You know, I've spoke to, I've spoke to a couple off the record and they say, you, 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 we know what you found, but we can't. We, we have, just haven't got the money to, we, we haven't got finance to, to, uh, to do any digs or anything. Not given. So you'd have to I'd get a private, you know, archaeologist. Is the fear that if people saw an exhibit or something based on all this pagan stuff that they would probably react in a horrible way, finding out that that's what their roots were? Is that the biggest fear? Because if we're not talking about like them giving funding, they probably unless you're doing it on your own personal time or free time out of your own pocket, that's the only way it's ever going to be discovered. Well, that's why it hasn't been discovered. It has, but it's not on the on the record. It's been discovered. I, I, I speak to other people on Twitter who found found things, especially up in Scotland, and then um, picked this things, and they're not mentioned. They're just not mentioned, you know. And it's it's, it's like the, like I. <laughs> this is how people it, hate it, their it's history. It, it it's it's madness. Like oh. it's like that the the. the the, 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 the area, the town where all the um, Pictish stones were found is called Magull, Magelli, exactly the same as where I live, where I found all these stones. <laughs> you know, I, I think, but I've got, I, I can't prove this, but I think that the Vikings were here a lot earlier than what the history books say. They must have been here earlier because there's, because there's Viking... Um, there's Viking graffiti in Istanbul. Well, you know, if you can go to Istanbul, I'm sure you can go across the North Sea to Britain from Norway. Well, they base everything off of that the Vikings came to a new land on giant fleets of ships to conquer whatever territory it was. And I go, but any smart military strategy would be to try and send a scout out first, send somebody out a smaller group before you send your whole fleet over because you don't know what you're going into. You could all die at sea. So they had to send people over before that. Yes. Yeah. Well, if you could imagine this bog island, the bog island area where I live from between the River Ribble and the, the Mersey with the River Oak going through it, 
It was a, a bog. It was a peat bog, and it's about it's, it's it'll go from Liverpool to Preston, which is about thirty mile, and about fifteen mile inwards. So you've got set thirty mile by fifteen mile of bog iron field that can be harvested every fifteen years, right? And was probably second to gold to to, to the uh, Vikings, literally second to gold. So it would have been like a, a, having a huge oil field. It'd have been a big big business. Now, did they know the property or the value of what they were digging into? Yes, they knew exactly what they were doing because well, because they must have been perfect, perfectionists at finding it because it's all the pits right are all along old river beds or the streams are still there, you know because the, it's where the stream goes through the peat bogs or the river goes through the peat bogs, which causes the reaction for the for the uh, bog iron to be created and they're all there and all the pits still I, I've, I can go and get bog iron right now yet no one else in England has ever been has found it they've looked for it but they've never found it well, I can go and get it now <laughs> is it just because you found a method what do you well, think I know where it is I, I, I know where it is I know how to find it once you've got it's like anything else once you've found it a couple of times or done it a couple of times it's easy so do you think that's what it was for the Vikings that they just got really good at it because they kept repeating it over and over again? Yeah, yeah, it was so big that they just keep coming. I think they've been able to. Well, they were like you say they were mentioned in the United States. So you say ten sixty six they were here, and they were here. I think five hundred years before. Really? Yeah, the university done DNA tests on uh, Southwest Lancashire, which is where I live. And the percentage of Norse DNA was, I think, 80-something percent. It was huge. Then um, why why are we still going off the fact that they might have been here at 1,066? Well, because it says in the, the, our local history books, the, the first paragraph, the first sentence says, three chains ruled Sefton. But we don't know who they were. That's it. No one bothers to find out who they were. Well, <laughs> wait, hold on a second. Hang on. That's a big piece of history that you're trying to explain. That's like saying, uh, how does what how does rain happen? <laughs> well, rain happens because it's supposed to happen. Well, what's the science? What's what's that? What's the fact you didn't even bring God in? You just said because that's how it is. That's, that's how it is. It's it's you know, it's I don't know it. I think. And no one, you see, I'm not, an, I'm not educated as an archaeologist. I'm not an educated person. I, I, I had my own businesses, so I'm not listened to. Yet I've been studying this area for over 25 years, you know. So we know, I know a little, you know, I must know a little bit. But one, one chap come along with me one time, but it was off the records, and I just showed him a few mounds. And he couldn't believe it. There's three mounds on a hill, the highest part of the area. Huge mounds, three next to each other. And the history books say that the cannons, right, facing towards somewhere, they used to fire cannonballs every so often. But they're not. The Norse, the, 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 the Celtic, north, south, facing mounds and um, mounds, and all over them, they've got these stones. And some of the stones are the shapes of the uh, profiles of um, warriors' heads with helmets even, right? And they I've found them in books, and that's known as, they're called um, legless warriors with helmets, and they were put there to, to go with the, you know, to, to guard and to look after the, 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 the dead warrior. Thousands of them, the whole area. You know, I, I've got, must have, 600. I won't take any more now. Now, I've only dug into one mound because I don't want to disturb them, and that's when I found the silver, uh, the small piece of gold, a long, huge piece of iron, but nobody, no, no, no skeleton or anything. So I think they were better. I, I don't understand that part properly. <laughs> but what I'm saying, uh, it's not guessing. I can prove it all. Just got it. I'm prove everything. Have you tried submitting all the evidence that you have and all the things that you found to one of those educational sites, or they just don't even want to deal with it? They won't look. 
Come on, bro. That seems like a, a major gatekeeping of information that you're choosing to seclude this one area of it just because you're afraid of what the outcome might be. No, I, I, if I have my, if someone, if, if two archaeologists come along to me and say, look, let's see what you've got. Show me what it is, right? But within a few hours, they'd be complete to know. I'm right. I can't, I'd, I'd like to write it down in the book properly, but I, it, to me, writing a book is like, drawing a picture or painting a picture. It's a bit of an art, and I haven't got that art of doing it. I just can't. It's all in my head, and I've got it down in notes this big. But when I try to put it down on paper, it's... It, it, it's... Well, speak speak what, what, what you want to get out there. This is a podcast, so this is probably the best platform to vocalize the things that you're saying so people understand this. Maybe we get enough people out there riled up for it. We can get a giant push to be able to look into it deeper. Yeah. But, but like I say, it's... I started off with this, this. It was a bog iron site, a huge bog iron site. I the, the this bog iron still there, um, but before that, there was someone else here, and it was the Celts, the Anglesey Celts, and that is very, very, very important because no one knew where they went, and they come here. So it's like a if missing at, thing. It, 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 yeah, a big missing thing because if you look at the map. Right of Northwest England, you'll see Anglesey is, is only it's only from the River Alt Estuary. Used right, it's about it's thirty two mile now. Then it could have been well, it's lost a mile. It, it we've lost a mile to the sea in fifty years. So in fifteen hundred years, it could 10, 15 mile away. It nearer to Anglesey, and coming into to, to come from Anglesey into into the into this into this area, we we'll you come down the river off. If you didn't know that, it, if you didn't know it, like the back of your hand, you wouldn't go anywhere near it because it was a flood river. And like you say, it would be a river and then it would just go into a sea. Unnecessary risk. Very, very unnecessary risk. And the, and the Romans, there's no way the Romans would follow them, follow them in, into an area like that. Their ships wouldn't take it anyway. And um, you just wouldn't do it. So the Celts knew you were safe there. And I think they were safe there. Till I think th that's where I'm stuck. I don't know what happened to them. They were here. The, the, the mounds are here. The proof's here that they were there. The, zoom, the, the zoomorphic um, chronologic the, the carvings on them, it's, it's, it's 100% is Celtic. They were here, but I don't know what happened to them. I they don't know just, if they didn't just disappear. Well, this is it. So I don't know what happened to them, and uh, and another uh, indicate very good indication is in, in the old Irish annals. They call they call a place of um, we'd call it Avalon. You, you know what I mean? But it, well, it wasn't. Yeah. It, uh, but they called it Magmel, right? Spelled M A G H. Dash M E L L Magmel. Well, I live in Magol, and next to me is Melling, right? And Magol is M A G H U W L, and it is next to us. Now that could, <laughs> I think that's Magol or Melling Mag Mel, and it was it was um, two two um, two ma two mountains that two hills, sorry, that rose out of the sea, mm -hmm. right, directly east. Of Dublin, well, we're directly east of Dublin, and if the river was flooded, Mughal and Melling, Magmel would stick, would be look be two hills, two small hills sticking out of the bog, full of uh, full of forest. The forest was called Mughal Forest, Mag Forest, and then the, the river went through there. That they knew the Romans wouldn't go there, they knew it, and that's why they've come. So are they explaining that the reason why they don't know where the Celtics went was because of the area that the water probably just like just much like um the Sphinx and all that in the desert or in Egypt um the the climate's so shifting that it hides a lot of stuff and it reveals a lot of stuff later so they think that that's a lot of the Celtic maybe leftovers I would say or whatever they left behind might have gotten sunken into the bog or might have gotten somewhere where we can't be able to access it or see it. Yeah, that's, 
they have looked on the, there's a couple of islands between between here and Anglesey, only small islands. Well, they've looked at them, they've dug them, looking for the mounds, and they haven't found them. But if you look, the topography then would have been quite different than it is today. It's a bit, the, the, the River Old Estuary would have been maybe 10 or 15 miles closer to Anglesey. So you could get from Anglesey to that estuary to come into Mongolia and, and through the bog to, to hide, basically, have a nice if you knew the area, just, just by following the coast. Then. It, it, I, you need to see the map, really, but it, you don't have to be Einstein to work it out. You just go, well, where would I hide? You, no one's following you. And they, they did do that because the mounds are here. So that's, you know, there's no, that's what we've done. And Mad Mel, that's mentioned in the annals, it is, I don't know if that's a coincidence, but we're in Mughal and Mellingham, we're directly east, directly east, which is said, of Dublin. <laughs> it's it's really strange because if you look at like bogs, for instance, just with the climate area, I wonder if they found a way to be able to handle that better. Like if they're going to go out there and they're going to risk navigating that area, not only to escape enemies, but also they probably understand the, the land a little bit better. I wonder if they were able to because there's been known tunnel systems back in the day too of people on the verge of discovering tunnel systems. I wonder if that's what we are considering these tombs or these burial mounds or whatever. We look at them as grave sites. Are they grave sites or were they like tunnel systems in a way? I wonder if they go deeper. These are grave sites, but I do think there's tunnel systems here. Well, I think there's something hidden here. There's got to be something. It, nothing just disappears, even with the climate. Somebody yeah. would have found it later. Mm. It's well. If I was a Celt there and I wanted to hide something and I knew the area, this is where I'd hide it. There's nowhere else. This is where I'd hide it, and they have hidden it, and they have built the mounds here because the mounds are here. I've got the proof. It says very, very important. You know, it's, it is important. It will come out properly one day. I'd just like to be alive when it does. Yeah. But it will come out. Now, you know, I, I, do you ever get any pushback for the things that you say? Like, has anybody ever contacted you telling that you need to stop? No. No? No. No. no none of that. No. I have had none of that. And um, you, you know, when there's. I've got a lot of archaeologists follow me on Twitter. A lot of archaeologists follow me, you know. So someone's incested somewhere. There's somebody spying and, on you, waiting for you to figure something out. He knows too much. Well, if I, you go missing, I, I'll well, know. <laughs> I'd love to know. There's some type of alchemy going on. There's some type of heat. That's it's as though it's. I know you can't. It, it's impossible. I think, but it's still the fusing metal with 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 art, with with stone. With it, I've got stones that have got metal in them, uh, consist of metal and stone. Now, I, I think they might be meteorites, but then they are slightly magnetic, but a meteorite is very magnetic. But I think um, heat can cause mag mag magnet slight magnetism. But they are, they're, they're, they're um, iron and stone mixed. In fact, uh, on my Twitter, there's a few pictures of them on my Twitter uh, on my Twitter uh, pictures. You can see them. You can yeah. see the iron. I was but, looking at some of the uh, pictures you were putting up. You have a lot of carving pictures on there as well, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, e even the ones that are iron and stone, right? The carved. Now, if you look, if you look closely at the carvings, it's. I'm like, I don't know. I do not know how it's, it's done. I, it, it's. I don't know if it. I just don't know. I haven't got a clue, but it's done. Somehow it's done. That's got to make you more interested in trying to figure out what it is. Well, I do, yeah. I, I try, we've tried all sorts of things to, 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 to work out how they've done it. And, but we we think it, it, it's, well, I think it's heat. And um, I also think that they use water wheels to, to, to work the bellows to get that heat up. I think you all use water wheels. I'm not, I can't prove that, but it's just a, a strong theory I have. Because to get that type of heat, 
for what they were doing. You, you know, it's blast furnaces. Well, that wasn't that. That was the 1750s blast furnaces, weren't they? In just a revolution. <laughs> a long time before that. And they were definitely getting the skis. They must have been getting think of one, how one, they could I sense, have. I sent one piece of iron. There's, there's the iron that's carved, right? Well, if I find Victorian iron in a field, it crumples. This iron is solid still. And when I, I sent it down to get analysed in, in Birmingham, at the size um, office in Birmingham where you get uh, the, where the gold stamped and checked, you know. Mm -hmm. and uh, But it's £70 every item you, you, you take, so it's it's not a cheap thing to do. And it come back as 98% iron. And the guy said to me, he said, no one makes iron at 98% iron. It's always got something else in it. He said, he said, that's, I said, I've never seen that before, 98% iron. Well, that, that would explain Viking weaponry, why it was able to, so, to be so strong and so tough. Yeah, well... <laughs> That when I've done some homework, bog iron not only was 40 percent, he got 40 percent out of uh, out of it, it was a better quality iron than ore iron. I don't know why. Well, who was the first person to discover that you could use it for weaponry? I want to know who that person was. Well, I asked the, I spoke to the, the head uh, Roman guy at Chester and asked him, um, because on the Goth map, the very old Goth map, there's a Roman road that goes across the River Mersey, which was probably a bog, and into this area and stop, just stops in this area. And it's the only Roman road that doesn't go anywhere. It just stops. And I said, could it have been for fresh water or could it have been for bog iron? And he said, you know what? He said, I don't know what they made the weapons out of. So I'm going to find out, he said, and I've heard of them since. So they don't know if the Romans were using the bog iron as well. I would look at it like if they were going, if they had interactions with the Romans, they probably saw a use for it just on the basis of they had already discovered how to harness it into a weapon. Oh, yeah. But, but it was that important. It was so important that the Vikings went, you know, to North America, definitely Greenland, looking for it. To them, it was second to gold to the Vikings. Now, it's not mentioned at all in, in Roman history. I don't think, I've not, I've not, I can't find it mentioned, the Romans making bog iron. The only, the only, all I can find of people doing it was the Norse. We never used it at all in Britain, at all. It was never used. Why not? I don't know. Because it was the best source of iron. By far. It's it's a, it, the only it's, the only possible thing I can think of is the fact of like the Vikings, they would risk so much for that only because they saw the benefits of using it for weaponry, because that was their whole thing was about pillaging and conquering and trying to be the strongest of the strong. So you, seeing a, a weapon that would beat everyone's out of the water, it's like having a, a car while everybody's still riding on a horse. Yeah. Yeah, the, weapon, the, the weaponry must have been a lot better. A lot better. And, they, and it's, a, it's a, a lot quicker to refine the bog iron, to get the iron out of the, the bog iron than it is to mine it. A lot quicker. You can do it in a day, believe it or not. Don't you think this is, would be too large of a thing to hide from people? Yeah, well, you'd think so. You'd think so. Well, you know, this, this area was bog iron, that's what it was. Well, we're not talking about like a mix-up of, uh, of different colors, or we're not talking about like a, a, a two- or three-year difference. We're talking about 500 years that you're now just saying, oh, no, it wasn't then, it was in a 1,000 years. And it's like, well, hold on a second, they actually might have been here in 500 well, we were here. We were here a thousand years ago. They were here 1066, right? They must have gone then when when, when they were, when we were invaded. But that they were mentioned three times then, so they were getting bog iron then. And I think that they were getting it 500 years before that. So I think we've been there for 500 years. And before that, 500 years before that, I think Celtics were here, the Celts were here. Now, if they intermingled, because they were all pagans. I don't know. That's what I think we've done. 
Now that's, you know, because if they've intermingled, if that's where the Celts have gone the, and they've mingled and, and bred in the end, you know, if they were here when the Vikings come and found the bog iron, you know, did the Vikings kill them? Did they battle or did they get on? Now, I've never found any battle sites, any swords, anything to do with battles in this area. Nothing. All I can find are mounds and bog iron sites. No sign of any battles. I've never found anything, any weapon, arrowhead, anything. So I don't think there was a battle here. Are you only, are you only finding like art pieces? Or are you only finding like remnants of like no, what would be there? anything to do with the mounds? I'm finding the bog the bog iron um, furnaces were in the fields where where they've had furnaces. Some of the field names are, are one's uh, furnace field, one blacksmith field. It's a good but, names. You know, <laughs> so you know, yeah, it's just not hard to wear that one. But I found you can find them on on, on Google and go and find you know where the the crop marks where the to be always by by a sand. Um, well, we've got the Shady Sands um, belt that runs right through this area as well, which goes to Pilkington's, which is the biggest glass manufacturer in Europe, and that's the same sand that they use. So they weren't stupid. They knew that the sand was the right type of sand to use for whatever they were doing for the furnaces. Now, do you think there's an industrial thing that's a perspective that we're not seeing? Do you think that maybe someone in the area discovered that this was more resourceful and we should probably get all of it as much as possible? But much like um, when a building is being built, they have to do an environmental check to make sure there's no harm to any species that's there. Now, imagine if you're a giant company and you see this giant resource. Now, you might use it for some other things to get your business started, but then you find out that it's actually a historical site. That's where the Vikings or that's where the Celtic like roots might be from, and then you'll be able to pull out and get more information. So now they have to block that whole area off. You're not going to tell anybody it was like that. You're going to throw it right away, whatever you find. Well, we've been trying to um, frack. They, they put a, a couple of fracking sites on the area, I believe. But uh, I don't know how they're getting on at the moment, but they come in fracking uh, one one in there, uh, one about 16 miles away. But, but all in two of them in this in the bog iron area. So it, it was a bog, and so they're trying to track it. But I honestly don't think it's anything to do with that. I just think it's no one, no, no one knows. They haven't worked it out. No one's bothered looking because they, if you read the history books of the, the local area, you wouldn't come here to look for anything. Are do you have any colleagues that you work with that are helping you understand this a little bit as well? Too? Yeah, yeah, I have a couple. I have a couple of uh, um, uh, an educated young chap who helps me at university. He's like he does a lot with me. A young man called Dale. He's uh, he's very helpful. He's quite uh, knowledgeable. On it. He knows this. He knows the same. It's 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 here proof. I've got the proof. So what's what's holding you back from doing a book or something? Is just you just can't get well, it down on the paper? I can't get it down the paper. If I'm someone like come, too. if someone will come along to me and say, "Look, you give me your notes and tell me everything, and I'll write a book." You've got the greatest book with fact, factual book that's been written for years because it's new. Yeah, I'm, I'm, with proof behind it, it's not just a, a legend book, not legendary, with proof. When you put everything together and you look at Marg Mel, it's Marg Mel's my brother Belling, I know it is. It's um well, I mean, you're on a great platform. A podcast is a great way to help get the word out there, at least to younger audiences. That it seems like the younger generations are the one that are getting a lot done on the basis of they're trying to like attacking the system that we've kind of all been like stuck in the same routine with over and over again. And that's the only way you're gonna get change is when you get enough people to be able to look into it and say, Hey, this is more important than our egos or whatever we want to contain is like, and here's the issue with academia. If you're coming out with something new. And you're coming out with something that's going to change the whole normal of what everybody's been thinking for so long. Now, every scientist or any person that has discovered something or had laid claim to something, you're now attacking their thing. Even though you're necessarily not attacking them as a person, you're showing them like, oh, you had a piece of the puzzle, but this actually blows you out of the water. And they're like, I don't want that past. I spent 30 years trying to figure out my research. And now you're going to tell me in what a couple of years you destroy mine. It's the the biggest nightmare you have 
in any type of history is if something gets written down as history and it's wrong. Yeah, that happens uh, a lot. <laughs> once, now that happens in the top books down to the local history books. Once it's put down, it's down. Now to, to say it's wrong, it, 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 once it's in them history books, right? It's very, very difficult to change them history books. It's very, much like a person's difficult. mind. It's hard to change. It, it, I know some terrible mistakes in the history, in my local history books, ridiculous mistakes, but they're written down. The people who have written them down know as well, but there we go. Do you think it's a lack of interest in what the truth is or do you think it's just a lack of interest of wanting to put effort into changing something when it's already written that way i think it's a i think it's a lack on the archaeologist side and the writing local writer side i think it's a lack of the reading other people they, they're not doing their own study the really, i go out in the fields they don't do you understand what I mean? That yeah. I, 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 I dig in the mud. They don't. They listen. They, they read something that someone has written. Well, that's like that with anything. If somebody sees somebody say something, they take that at face value rather than looking into it on their own. Exactly. Like the, 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 when, when, when Liverpool Archaeology Society said that the pits in the area were mile pits, right? We got that from a, um, a, a book that I've read a few times, um, The Daily Diary of Lord Sefton, 1711 to 1720. And he, visited, he didn't know what they were, the pits. And he visited his cousin who lived in Chester, and he had similar, a few similar pits on his land, and they were mild pits on his land. So the, the Lord Sefton thought they were mild pits and said, it's book of possibly mild pits, blah, blah, blah. Well, if you do your homework, you find that to have marl, to make marl, the pit has got to be on limestone. Now, in Chester, where they were, there's a limestone seam that goes through where the pits are. There's no limestone here at all. Therefore, it's impossible to make marl. Also, ask any single farmer about marl, and I go, it's not here. It's just wrong. Yeah, it's in the books. I spoke to him on the, on the phone, the man. He just he got he he just said to me uh, no absolutely no he, he said they're not bog iron so well I found bog iron in them they can't be mile pits and he's just said they are mile so that was it <laughs> so we did understand there's four different reasons that the pits are here one is bog iron that I say because I found bog iron there the other one is bomb holes that these bomb craters well they weren't bomb craters for me dad. Was born here through the war, never seen one bomb. So there weren't bomb craters, and there's thousands of them. And the third one is that there were clay pits to make the to, to line the sides of the canal, which you know, some of them are miles away from the canal. And the canal um, builders used um used um silk their corner silk clay to line the canals. And all the canals were used with that, so it wasn't that it's bog iron, but but Unless someone comes along with me and goes, yeah, <laughs> dig the stuff out and give it to them and make an iron out of it. I'm, I, to be honest, I'm hopefully I'm waiting for the guys to get in touch. With, I'm going to try and get the, a, a blacksmith to make. I, I can make the iron ore from the bog iron, and how to do that, right? And give it to a blacksmith. You, what you just get a big bloom after it, and the blacksmith. Will, I'm going to see if I can get them to make an axe or something out of it. But even if I do that. What do you, you know, who do you tell? If you have any colleagues that you know that are also in the same boat as you on this, let's get them on the show. I'm more than happy to talk to someone else too. I think that's what you need. And sadly, it's when you have one person with a microphone speaking to a bunch of people, you still need people to go around that one person to get the power. That's the craziest yeah. thing is that we don't have enough people that are agreeing with each other or focused into one thing. We have a bunch of people that are trying to do their own independent studies, which isn't bad, but you also understand is that like, you're not giving anybody else some time to understand even more of what their perspective is. And when you don't do that, you lose a whole vast amount of just control or even information. I mean, control is not necessarily what you want, but what you want is the truth to get out there because right now somebody's controlling the truth or controlling a certain type of history that is necessarily not correct. 
that is all I want. I, I'm not looking for any financial gain or anything like that, right? I don't, I, I'm quite a, a shy person. I don't want any fame or anything like that. But what I've found is, is, is real. It's real history. It's, and it's important, and not just important to this area, it's important to everyone. You know, it's all, it's it's all of our history. It's all everyone's history, and especially them, the, the, the Druids. They were the they were the, the Celtic bosses, you know. They were the the, the ones, and they they were here. And that's when whenever you see a picture of like a horse skull or a cow skull, you think of the those guys. Yeah, you know very very little about them. Very 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 little. Bangor University, Bangor University, which is just by Anglesey, no more than the same. Believe me. Well, it's so weird how like pagan and all those things now that are were a big part of our history, like even the old school Christian testimonies, all those types of things are now seen as like a dark part of history. Like this is where we almost went evil. And it's like it's not evil. That was a big part of our lives. And now we learned and evolved from that. Like, but they don't want to they don't want to talk about it. They rather hide it and push it under the carpet where nobody. Else. That's the problem with the world. Everyone wants to push whatever they seem is not fit anymore and just shove it under the carpet. It's like it's still there. It still happened. You can't ignore it. You're supposed to learn past that. Of course, you, can, you can't. You can't. We had um, uh, last year. Um, um, the old people throwing them um, statues of old uh, the old slave traders in the river. Now, no one likes no one liked the slave trade, and it was a, a horrible part of our history. But it, it happened. You, you, you can't ignore that it happened. You can't brush it under the table or rip rip statues down, or you'll be doomed but, to repeat it. We won't repeat it, obviously. Surely won't repeat it. If you delete history, you're going to end up doing the same exact thing. There's stuff you can look yeah, back exactly. 100 yeah. years ago. Yeah, that's my point. Yeah, yeah. if you delete it, people don't know about it and it can happen again. It, you know, if you delete history and, and, and people don't know about it, it can happen again. You, you, you've got to keep, it's got to be open. And that's why it's so important, this, what, what, what I've found. It needs to be known properly because it is very 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 important well it's just like with um the pandemic for instance the last plague was like a hundred something years ago and we totally forgot about we deleted all that we didn't have any notes we didn't have any recorded history of how they acted with it but if you look through the history and see what the reactions of the society were at the time not the preventative measures that they had it's the exact same stuff we acted Isolating people yeah. in their homes, doing all these types of things. We didn't have, we didn't, we never even bothered to carry that information on. You forgot it. We're doomed to repeat it. The best part about history is it's supposed to be recorded. No matter what side you're on, if you're a pagan, if you're whatever, you're supposed to record the factual things that happen. So future generations don't make the same mistakes. But it's an issue of, it's very hard to care about people that aren't born yet. You know what I mean? It's very hard yeah. to think past that. Yeah. Well, if I could find someone to come and write a book or, or whatever or show, it'd be, it'd be a very, very, very interesting book. Well, very, very where, interesting. where can people find your links, for instance, like your Twitter and everything? Oh, well, I'm not very computer literate. I'm not, honestly, I, I can I sorted this out, but my Twitter, my Twitter account, my sister account, that's all about really, and put me pictures on it. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I haven't got any, I should have websites and that, but I haven't, I don't know, I just haven't. Well, I have a few author I'm, friends I'm, I'm pretty sure I can connect you with, and hopefully we can get something going, maybe like a little bit of a book, somebody might be able to help you edit a rough draft or something. That would be absolutely fantastic. It would be, if you could see the, especially with the proof behind it, with everything, you mm -hmm. know, it's not a, it's not a legend, it wouldn't be, it's a fact, it's a fact, it's Next very important. Well, I'd like to have you back on again, and next time we could do something a little bit more focused in where you can bring me some stuff to show me on screen Absolutely. and everything and explain yeah. me a little bit. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll bring you some artifacts and show you what I've got. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll bring my, my friend who, who helps me along as well if, if, if you want. Yeah. Um, but is there any last message you want to say to anybody out there before we end the podcast? 
Um, wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs>